Hey everybody, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to our mobile home renovation project that is snowballed, creeped, grown, exploded, however you want to describe it. We started in our bedroom. We've branched out to the bathroom, the hallway. Had to call it quits before we started demolishing the living room because it's time to start to shoot it. Because <laughs> it's time to start putting things back together. Last video, we left you guys off with a wonderful accomplishment. We have a completely new floor. It was safe to walk on and dance. No one took up my offer of doing the Gangnam style dance, so we didn't get to see that. Today, we have an equally awesome feeling milestone. Mm -hmm. We are going to start framing a wall. We're getting framed. We're at the wonderful point of this project where we can actually start building things back to make this area into what it's going to be. I started last night a little bit by taking the old boards off the ceiling and replacing them with two by fours. And that is gonna be our reference point for framing this whole wall. We use the original wall's location. We'll just come down with a plumb or a level to check plumb and we'll frame our wall up from there. I'm going to be starting over here on this end. First, I need to go ahead and hold up a 2x4 against the wall, mark the drywall, and then cut it because I want to make sure this wall connects in with the studs and it does not just spaced off on the drywall. We have plans for replacing this drywall anyway, so no worries on that. Once I do that, then I can start framing in from there, working my way this way, building the headers for the doorways and such, and hopefully this won't take too long. Since we are lucky enough to have vaulted ceilings in the house, that means that every single one of these wall studs are going to have to have the angle or the taper cut on the ends of them. To save my sanity and make things easier, I'm going to go ahead and make a template block with the angle on it. I'm going to do that by holding this up. Get that staple out of the way. I'm going to hold this up where the wall is going to go. And then put another piece of wood against the ceiling and with everything held in place use my pencil to mark on this side and so that gives me the angle of this wall i now take this down and cut it and use this as my template for the angle another method for marking your studs is one that i like to use often it's called relative dimensioning it's where you use your actual thing you're going to cut hold it in place and mark everything so what I've done here is cut my wall stud longer than I need it to be, but still short enough to fit vertically up here. It's not going to hit the ceiling. I'm going to hold it in place. Try and get it pretty plumb all the way down the wall there. And then from here, I can mark it with the pencil right at the bottom of this one. That not only gives me my angle, but my total length to cut this for it to hopefully fit right in place. All right, moment of truth. Lining up down there on the floor, sitting on top of the bottom plate. And nice. All right, let's go ahead and attach this thing. Let's make it official. All right, before I put my second screw in, go ahead and make sure this thing is plumb. There we go. Thank you. 
Now it's as easy as just continuing down the line, attaching the stud to the one that's in the wall, tying it together, and we have our first official wall stud in place. Congratulations to everyone. We've all made it. Welcome to the wall. The, this is all you've gotten done? You guys hear what she just said? Come close and repeat to the camera. Is this all you've got done? Well, yeah. You've I mean, been in here forever. I've been here for like an hour. I'm is, going as fast as I can. Is your little hand tools not doing it for you? Well, they work. They're just, it is kind of hard to cut You want to go get something that's a little better for cutting? Did I hear a new tool? You want a new tool? Do I, are you kidding? <laughs> Guys, we'll be back. Uh, we're going tool shopping, apparently. Let's go. <laughs> Yay. Wait, this mean more projects? <laughs> yes. Well, we're home. So what do you think your little chop saw? Looks nice. I like that it is little. It's mm -hmm. very lightweight. It's portable. portable. I have to say I like it because I will not use a circular saw. <laughs> Just like I won't use a table saw. But I can use a chop saw. So this will allow me to help and cut boards for him so he can keep going. And it lets me do something to help. No more excuses, huh? Right. <laughs> Well, that being said, do you want to be the first one to cut on there? I got the bevel piece slide out. We can go ahead and slide it over and if you want. I guess so. Okay, okay. Oh 
Oh yeah, it's at an angle. It's ready to go. <laughs> nice. Cut wasn't too bad either. <laughs> We are gonna go ahead and just knock out a lot of this wall framing. When we get done with this, we will stop and talk to you. But for now, we are working machines and we are gonna get this knocked out. So sit back and enjoy the fast motion show and we'll talk to you guys in a second. progress is being made this is nice i always love framing over project because it goes super fast especially when up into this project we've been tearing things out and playing around in the floor this is nice however we are now out of wood so we get to go back to lowe's for the second time today and we're going to get another load of two by fours we only need maybe one or two long ones. The rest are eight footers, but I think we need around 16 total to finish out the boys wall framing and then also do the bathroom doorway framing and have a couple of extra just in case. We're gonna run there. We'll see you guys in a little bit. So since the end of the house is right here, it's really easy to get the wood in. So watch how we do it. like you're jousting. All right, so we've got the wall mostly framed up and I had the remembering thought to double check that, you know, this is flat and coplanar. 
make sure we're doing the same thing down below because while we have one board okay it's not really one board but it feels more like one board up there down at the bottom it's definitely split and in the bottom of this has always been the floating kind of squiggly wiggly i just put a straight edge down here and it's off it does taper towards the boys room the closer we get to the tub so what i'm going to do is take the screws up off the floor hopefully i haven't covered up any with the wall studs and try and straighten this thing out i did also check that this wall is plumb or not and it does kind of kick that way at the bottom just a little bit so thankfully that was a pretty easy fix i was able to get to the screws i needed to to just correct it a little bit we check the wall for plumb now and it looks good take more word for it no no it really does look good Obviously, I'm pretty picky, I guess. Bathroom wall is almost done. We have one more stud to put here to, you know, keep the pipe in the middle. And then we will move on to the bathroom wall. <laughs> bathroom, bathroom. That completes this wall section. The last thing we did, it feels like such a huge waste. We put a 2x6 back here. Its purpose in life is to make a corner for us to be able to attach the drywall on this wall and this one. It goes on this side of the wall and the other at least, so we'll just, it's just required. We won't think about a $10 board just sitting here for drywall. We have a completed wall. It feels nice. We can now move forward with the boys' bedroom, which is a little bit of our plan of attack. I mean, we're still going to frame the walls and stuff, but this at least allows us to... I mean, further divide and conquer. I can be working on framing. You can start the insulation, a little bit of electrical work. Mm -hmm. So this is good. This is a great step for us. It's starting to come back together now. All right, how do you like the new tool? The new tool is awesome. It takes a little bit of getting used to with the, what's it called? This is sliding, like the sliding miter saws. They're different. I have not used one of those before. So that was a little bit of different type thing to get used to but I like it and it allows me to help more mm-hmm definitely it is really nice to I mean okay I yeah. need one at 92 and a half right mm -hmm. so while the tool was not necessary yes we could have still kept on with this project with our circular saw it allowed us to continue working on this together if we didn't get the chop saw you were going to use a circular saw mm -hmm. so it would have been me measuring marking cutting measuring marking cutting which would have been boring for you <laughs> i can't do anything yeah yeah so well not that i need justified or any kind of reasons that new tools are welcome on this property but that at least does have reason mm -hmm. i would say we were definitely a lot faster with this tool as well we we're able to get precision cuts it's safer so whatever we're not trying to sell you on this whole we got the tool for ourselves we love it but just i guess explaining maybe i don't know Will it do a four by four? I don't know that it will. It's only a seven and a quarter inch blade. So, I mean, it may do it on multiple cuts, ah. but as far as all at once, I don't think so. Cause that's the only other type wood. Like if we were doing an outdoor project that we would need it for. Right. No, we could definitely cut it with this. We just rotate it once. That it's, works. It has the same cutting capacity as a regular circular saw. Like a, okay. a full size yeah, circular saw. That makes sense. So, um, yeah, I don't think that'd be a problem though. I like that it's battery powered. It's portable. So if we, like you said, do anything in the yard or, I don't know, go somewhere and do a project, we don't have to have power. And his old one, which is like, I don't know, 10, 15 years old. It's like oh, old. old. And it was a cheap one when it was new. <laughs> and it's very heavy and yeah. bulky and it's really hard to move around. So this is nice Plus upgrade. It, it was time for a new one. Like, yeah. Plus, it's so loud, it wakes the dead every time you start to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the brake stopped working on it, too, actually. Yep. It lost its safety feature of when you're done cutting, it just kept <laughs> on going. I mean, it would freewheel it. It wasn't like the motor was running wild, but... Freewheel it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Now that we are past the floor, I think things will be picking up pace quite a bit. Someone and has set a, a very ambitious goal. Oh, I have. Um, you said it when we went to the got hop, hopped in the car to go to Lowe's. You were like, you know what? We could be putting drywall up this week. And I was like, oh. what? No. Uh, and then I got to think about it, and yeah, we could. That's pretty awesome. Pretty amazing. Since we were crawling on the floor a couple of days ago. <laughs> and under it, and in it. 
<laughs> if you are wondering why in the world did we frame a five foot wide door for our boys bedroom you'll have to stay tuned we got something special something really cool it is a first for us and our whole world repertoire of DIYness. Mm -hmm. first time we've ever done something so we'll explain it we'll show you guys in the next video or the one after that probably the next one probably the next one yeah either way i just wanted to say that in case you're wondering son that is a really big doorway what are you doing french doors <laughs> bunch of a small house why are you putting a six foot door in there this is a slash you know garage yeah so anyway wanted to give that as a little bit of explanation and possibly a teaser thanks guys for coming along and leave a comment below we love to read them and otherwise we'll see you guys next time in the house yes it'll be the house bye Hey everybody, my name is Sam. I'm at Okay, come on. <laughs>